Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. In this episode, we're going to be talking about armor class. To hit or not to hit. AC as damage reduction. Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the uh, armor class system, damage reduction, hitting to or not to hit. So, interesting concept. And, you know, we've all been dealing with AC in our system since the very, very first sure. editions of Dungeons & Dragons and armor stopping the damage. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, in, in most games, even in video games, yeah. you know, armor depends on, you know, armor class depends on how much damage you take, you know. And also, then your AC also depends on whether or not you get hit. You know, if you have a high AC, you can shrug off, you know, people just can't hit you, or you right. can shrug off a lot of damage. Now, in first edition, you know, we had uh, a 10 was a base. Yeah. Which was basically no armor. And then you had a minus 10, which was the best. Okay. It's very convoluted with the, the Thaco system to hit armor class zero. And you could figure it out quite easily once you knew the system. But in first edition, there were actually rules set up in the system for weapons increasing your chance to hit or lowering your chance to hit. So in, in real world combat, we know that a sword was basically almost worthless against plate armor. Oh, sure. You know, you're, you're sitting there banging on the guy, and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to dull your sword. Now, mm -hmm. maybe you got lucky and found a, a, a gap, and you stabbed yeah. and ran him through. Mm -hmm. Typically, a knight, one of their favorite weapons was what they call the crow's beak. Yeah. Or, you know, your hammer. You have a flat end, and you're bashing him, and then you could flip it around and, and hit him with the pointed end. Yeah. And it would pierce the armor. And then, you know, spears. Spears, once again, you know, finding the weak spots, arrows, the different kinds of arrows. So it, it made hitting armor or hitting a character a lot easier. The problem was in first, first edition is it slowed the system down and really nobody ever used it. Okay. So it really got convoluted. You know, you had all these charts. You know, okay, well, the person's got uh, plate mail and you're using a dagger. Okay, you got a minus four to hit. Okay, you're using a... Uh, you're using a falcata, and they've got leather armor. You got plus to hit, so it it really slowed down. You'd have to go through and look at everything on every character every time you're doing combat. So let me ask you this: So in first ed, they had what they called the Thaco system right. or whatever. When did it change to the sort of the streamlined system we Third use edition. now? Third edition. Yep. Okay. What did they have in second? Still had the same it was thing. Some same thing, Thaco. Okay, so in third edition, they came up with a, a different idea, which was what? So basically, your armor class was a base of ten. Okay. And then, based upon what armor you wore, mm -hmm. would increase your armor class. You All know? right. So. You might get a plus one or a plus two or a plus three or a plus four, whatever, you know, all, all the way up to, you know, having a 30 armor class. So, sure. You know, because of your dexterity and because of the armor you're wearing and maybe natural armor, making it harder to hit you. All right. And we all know that you've got your target spot. If you needed a, you know, if somebody's got an armor class of 17, well, you need a 17 to hit. So the weird thing about that, okay, so let's say... I would think, and, and so having someone hit you is kind of a con it's kind of a combination of decks, meaning that you're moving fast, or you're jumping around, or you're doing erratic movements. That makes it sort of hard to hit you, okay? But then armor, you know, of course, you know, AC. You could be a a dwarf tunnel fighter with full plate with a high AC. Now you can be hit pretty easily. Because a, a dwarven tunnel fighter is just basically a, right. a tank, and wearing heavy you know, armor, heavy slows armor slows you down. down. So if someone runs up and whacks you. Well, it isn't about being, you know, it it is about being hard to hit, but it isn't about being hard to hit. Yeah, that's the weird thing about it. Now they say within the systems of tabletop RPGs that it's all figured in, you know, 
the of the armor stopping damage. So if you get hit, you know, somebody hits you and they do six points of damage, it's all calculated in there that they're not doing as much damage. But is it rolling? So, hmm. you know, there's there are systems out there. We actually had a DM that had a system that was actually quite interesting, and it was armor more as a damage reduction. Yeah, yeah. And Paizo actually has it within their ultimate combat, but reading upon it, it gets pretty com complicated and can slow the system down more than it actually was. Now, okay. The system that we played in was, first of all, strength did not give you to hit on your, you know, you didn't improve your accuracy to hit. You okay. only, it only counted for adding damage. Okay, yeah. The system actually counted your dexterity to hitting the creature. Almost like weapons finesse. What? So basically it obsoleted weapons finesse. That kind of makes sense. You know, if you're a very dexterous person, you could you know, come up with a sword and do your sword play or your yeah. axe play or whatever, and you're more likely to hit somebody, you know, if you're very dexterous. Right. Like, that kind of makes sense. Right. And then when it came to the armor, your kind of armor, it, you so you, your armor class was based upon base of 10, mm -hmm. plus your dex modifier, yeah. plus any magical things that you might have, like yeah. a magical ring or yeah. somebody's casting a spell on you. So in reality, your paladin, your wearing a plate mail didn't have this 20 some odd AC if he's got an 18 or they've got an 18 dexterity. So it made it easier to hit them. The thing was if you were wearing plate mail, your plate mail would say have a damage reduction of nine. So if somebody hits you, you would take nine points off. They hit you for 12 points. You would take nine points out of there. They actually did three points of the actual damage to you. Okay. So hitting you was easier but doing damage, they didn't do as much damage. And then within that rule, we also had, if you had a shield, you had to say, I'm blocking with my shield. Now, which is actually something that Pathfinder 2nd Edition does. You have to say within your three-action economy that you're going to be blocking with your shield. Okay. The only difference is in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, when you do that, your shield stops X amount of damage, and then the shield will take so much damage, and then soon it gets broken, and now you've got to have your... Or damaged, and you got to have somebody casting the min spell. You know, I kind of like that idea because you can negate a lot of actual damage by throwing up a steel shield, right? Or a, a big tower shield. Or a wooden shield. Now, if you remember in Vikings, the first season, when uh, Ragnar is fighting the uh, the High Jarl, and they get into this fight, you know, three shields and yeah. breaking of the shields, yeah, they which was an actual thing oh, yeah. in real world. You know, combat. It wasn't necessarily yeah. to kill somebody. It was like, okay, we'll, we'll fight till you break three shields. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, is like their shields, you know, were light. You know, easy to carry. They could be used as weapons, too. Punching, hitting people <laughs> with the edges of them, that sort of thing. Um, they're a little bit different than the giant steel-covered knight shields that you always have. You know, that yeah. are made to stop arrows or spears or axe blows. You know, I just I like the idea that a shield, you know, would would increase. So you you know, during your movement action, you'd say, okay, you're being attacked. All right, throwing up my shield. All right, you get a you get a plus two or whatever on your AC because it's harder for them to hit you now. It yeah. makes sense. You know, it makes sense if you have a shield to say that. Oh, I'm throwing my shield up. Okay. Yeah. So whereas your character, let's say your character had an armor class of 14, and maybe they had a shield. Yeah. So your shield actually didn't count into your armor class until you said, I'm blocking with my shield, and then you got another plus one or plus two See, that just, based upon that the size of the shield. That just makes sense, and I've always wondered why in Pathfinder, because uh, like I... Well, even Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, even in D&D. &D. All right. So I've always wondered why, so why even carry a shield anyway? Yeah, they, they consider it automatically thrown into your armor class. Yeah. So let's say you've got your armor class of, of 16. Well, I'm taking a shield. Well, now I've got a 17, and it's a great shield. Okay, maybe it's two more points, so I get, you know, now it's yeah. 16 or, or, or whatever, you know. It's two more points on whatever you had. So yeah, I, I think if I said 14, then it's 15 if it's a regular shield, two, two more, so 16 if it's a large shield. And then maybe you've got proficiencies that maybe give you another bonus, or if it's magical, it gives you another bonus yeah. there. So it does start increasing your armor class. Well, uh, it does. So in Adain, my character, the cleric, uh, Niderbeck, 
he has a follower who has a shield. Now, Niederbeck has a shield, a very, very good shield. His follower has a very, very good shield. Because he has teamwork feats and he's a leader, when he locks a shield with his follower, shield wall, shield wall they essentially become almost invulnerable. Yeah. And in a sense, that's a pretty good way to look at it because when you have the big tower shields or the big shields... Or even the round shields. Yeah, even yeah. the round shields. When you lock them together, they create an armored wall and it makes it very, very difficult to hurt the person you're trying to attack. Right. We, all we have to do is look at the Roman Testudo. Yes. You know, how interlocked it was yeah. and how effective it was and how they could, you know, use their their gladius through it yeah, or even, even their, yeah. their feeling. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, true. You know, stabbing stabbing yeah. through it, you know, in the in the small gaps. But it would, you know, you're interlocked so it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. And they've actually shown with Vikings and Shield Wall how hard it is to get through it. Yeah. And, you know, you've got, you know, this wall. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense. I kind of like that idea. So, you know. you know, within the systems that we have of both Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder, really the armor class system, to me, is kind of... You know, it's I kind of like the way that we did it in that one system, where if if they hit you, you know, it was easier to hit you, but you may not take as much damage, so yeah. you might live longer. Well, I okay, I liked it too. I had to have a little cheat sheet right yeah. next to my computer. The, the problem was is when you started getting into, you you weren't using your strength; you were using your deck. So yeah. that was where you were getting confused. Yeah, and the thing is, is high strength characters really didn't come out of that system very no, well. No, in fact, the advantage was was if you rolled your stats, would be to dump them in the deck. So that yeah. way, you improved your armor class and you yeah. improved your hit. Yeah, yeah, you didn't do as much damage. Well, it's kind of like you know, if you have a big ogre who's super strong, but they're big and they're easy to hit, and they're, you know, they can take a lot of damage. You know, that kind of stuff. But yet, if they hit you, they can crush you. But if you're dexterous, you can dodge their blows. Yeah. So it does make sense. It's one of those things that you have to sort of conceive of beforehand so everybody can start making characters in that realm, in that concept. And then when you're doing your combat, everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to be doing in combat. And I like that idea. Yeah, armor is damage reduction instead yeah. of... Of blocking, you know, yeah. to hit or you either hit or you miss. Yeah. And in the uh, the damage reduction, it's easier to hit somebody, but you may not do the amount of damage to somebody because yeah. the armor is actually stopping, and maybe your armor takes some of that damage. You know, if you start taking into the hardness rules, of it, it does complicate the system more. Yeah. Because you're talking about rend. In, in destroying people's right. armor and things sundering like, and sundering rendering, and yeah. rendering and rending, so that's that's fine. Um, if you really want to do it correctly, you'd start keeping a you'd start keeping a chart of how much damage your armor is taking, your leather armor right. when it starts getting poked full of holes, that kind of stuff. Right. Or you know, in a way, it's like okay, you know, I'm I'm hit getting hit over and over again. I'm about ready. My armor's about ready to be sundered. Yeah, and then, like I said, you know, with the original first edition, where your weapon made it easier to hit, you know, adding that in. Because let's let's face it, everybody in, in most fantasy RPGs is either taking a sword or, or an axe. Everyone forgets about the, the crow's beak or the Beck to Corbin or some of these other weapons that were very effective oh, yeah. in real world oh, yeah. situations against plate mail. Yep, yep. You know, get a get a knife knight off his horse. And you take that the hammer to him or the the uh, uh, the rondel. Well, you, know, rond you take, take out your yeah, rondel, rondel for going through the yeah, yeah. the ice, ice slits. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you know anything about history, there were times when the English fought the French. I think especially at, at Agincourt might be the one where the English archers cut down trees and made big giant oak sledgehammers. And when the French knights were knocked off their horses. They ran up and banged on them with those sledgehammers until they crushed them inside yeah. their armor. Essentially, just like pounded on them yeah, until they either gave up or you, or you or you clubbed them to death. Yeah. So, yeah, you may have really tremendous armor, but it isn't going to protect you from being damaged. You know, depending, you know, your damage reduction would would be effective to a certain degree, but not completely and totally. You're not invulnerable. Yeah. It's a real interesting concept. You know, like I said, using armor as damage reduction instead of stopping the damage and using the decks putting more emphasis on decks yeah 
and uh, you know, and even mend from your wizard. You know, yeah. your wizard has that spell. And Better have mend. How many people ever use mend in a spell? Okay, they come across the door. You know, the door is broken, and you're trying to to, to hold the, the monsters out. Oh, mend. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now the door's fixed, and the door's locked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's an idea. It's a really good idea to look into. I know. Do you want to be more authentic, or you know, try to approach it from a more complex point of view, or do you want to just, you know, kind of keep it simple? You know, I I I like the idea that maybe we should make it a little more authentic. But everybody in our group would have to agree right. to start doing it right yeah. there. And not and, everybody want, would want to, I'm sure. And it may slow down the system a little bit. It may speed it up a little bit. I just think it would be yeah. cool if you had your own little chart where you could look at your type yeah. of armor and you could work out when it needed to be mended because of the amount of attacks it was taking. Yeah, so. if you hand it out to your players, you know, here's your chart of your armor class and yeah. here's how much damage it stops. So when I say I hit you for 12 points of damage, you can say, oh, okay, it stops 12 points of damage and I take this month this amount of damage yeah so characters can could possibly die quicker yeah but they might not die as quick either yeah because you may be stopping some of it so it's a real interesting concept as armor as damage reduction and it makes it it makes yeah. sense then for your character then to have like armor armor skills like repairing armor skills yeah or repairing weapon skills like mm -hmm. blacksmithing or armor then so that if you don't have a wizard you can repair each other's armor yeah when you go to the town yeah it just kind of makes sense to do that yeah so anyway we're going to end this episode of wizards of the tower role play may all your adventures be epic and keep on rolling don't forget to like share and subscribe and comment and share and everything else and if you like this idea please let us know what you think and if you have ideas upon the in your own system what uh what you use yeah thanks folks